conspiracies and the fiction surrounding January 6th and the events preceding it. Congressman, your GOP colleague Marjorie Taylor Greene compared mask requirements in the House to Nazi Germany's treatment of Jews during the Holocaust. Now, her comments come as uh, we talked about earlier in the program. There is a spike in anti-Semitic incidents here in the U.S. I have to say, I was reluctant to give her any attention at all this morning. But this is somebody with a big megaphone, especially in your party, who says things like this on a daily basis and faces almost no backlash, really no backlash from Republican leaders. What does that say about your party right now? First off, it's any comparisons to the Holocaust, um, it's beyond reprehensible. Uh, this is, I, I don't even have words to describe how disappointing it is to see uh, this, this hyperbolic speech uh, that frankly amps up and, and plays into a lot of the anti-Semitism that we've been seeing in our society today. Uh, vicious attacks on, on the streets of New York and in Los Angeles. Um, that should be, and I do condemn that in the strongest terms, there is no excuse for that. But the broader message that, and, and to your point of, of not even wanting to bring it up, I mean, the broader challenge right now is that that's where the oxygen is. It's in the, the most outlandish, the most far-fetched, the most attention-seeking message, right? We should be talking about policies. We should be talking about uh, the growing climate solutions. We should be talking about all of the things that will have a tangible impact on this country, on where our cybersecurity capabilities are today, on how we are going to remain competitive and, and outlast and, and be mm -hmm. the world victors in our global competition against China, right? That's not where our conversation is. It gets distracted by personalities. It gets distracted by so everything that is ultimately a very little substance, but has an influence on the body politic. So before I let you go, let's bring it back to those issues. Uh, you are a member of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. It was in large part because of your group uh, that 35 Republicans, including yourself, voted yes on the January 6th commission. Should people have hope that that happened, that the, yeah, your caucus, Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus, at least brought some people together? and that bipartisanship is doable? I certainly think that it's not all doom and gloom. There are members in Congress, and I'm proud to know and be friends with many of them, who want to seek solutions, who aren't just going to react in a reflexive manner with what may be best for their political ambitions or their party. Um, because frankly, I think we all succeed in the long term if we figure out those areas where we may have common agreement, if we find out how we can build upon that and grow some trust. Because that is the one thing that I've seen breaking down just in my short time there, right? And, and that is something that we cannot regain, we cannot rebuild overnight. That has to be done bit by bit, bill by bill, good faith effort after good faith effort. Okay.